Hello awesome artists. Today for art you are going to be making a salt dough fish tank. And in your fish tank you can include any type of fish or sea life that you would like to put inside. We are going to be making salt dough today. If you do not want to make salt dough you can also use play dough. So what you will need for today. You will need a piece of cardboard or you can use the back of a cereal box like this. Um, I would not recommend using paper because it's not strong enough to hold the weight of the clay. You will also need a marker. I'm using a Sharpie, but you can use a black marker if that's all you have. And if you want to start drawing with a pencil first and then trace over it with the marker, that's not a bad idea. You will need some crayons without the paper for our background. And then for the salt dough, you're going to need some flour you are going to need some salt, mine's in a bag, some salt. You will need some measuring cups, we're going to be using a half a cup and also a quarter of a cup, and a bowl to mix it in, and your hands to mix it up with. You will also need some water, okay? So those are the ingredients for today. Let's get started. So we're going to start by drawing our fish bowl first, but let's first talk about our elements of art. Elements of art we're using today, line, color, shape, form, and texture. We are going to be focusing on those elements of art today, specifically texture, how something feels, and also we're going to be talking about the color wheel because we're going to be mixing our salt dough colors together starting with primary and then creating our secondary. All right, let's first get started with our fish bowl. I'm gonna be using the back of a cereal box, like the inside of the cereal box, I should say. You can also use snack boxes or you can just cut up a piece of cardboard that's a little bit thicker and just be really careful, have an adult help you and you can just cut that out and make a square or rectangle shape. So I'm gonna start with my fish bowl. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the oval on the top of our fishbowl. So we know the top is actually a circle when you look down. For example, it looks, here's a cup, this is a circle. If you turn it to the side, you will see that it becomes more of an oval shape. Okay, so we're going to create that illusion by drawing an oval and it'll make it look more three-dimensional. So I'm going to start in the middle with my two fingers at the top and I'm going to pull them out so I know that it's in the center. So I'm going to start in the middle, pull my fingers out depending on how wide you want your fishbowl to be. About there, I'm going to make a little dot. Boop, dot, boop. There's where my oval is going to be. All right, and I'm going to connect those two dots with a smile line. And then I'm going to connect the top with a rainbow line. And if it's not perfect like mine, that's all right. And then I'm going to draw two lines going down. Boop. Boop. And then I'm going to connect those two lines with a smile line to make it look three-dimensional. So it's going to basically be parallel to this line right here. And parallel is when something is um, right next to something else. There. So there's the top of my fish bowl. So now we are going to create the actual bowl part. So this is like the top where you put the fish in and we're going to create the bowl. So now we're going to go to the bottom of our cardboard and we're going to figure out where the bottom is going to be. So I'd say about here. I'm just going to add another dot there, another dot there, and I'm going to connect it with a slight curve. Okay, and then the hardest part is drawing a really big curved line for our fish bowl. You want it nice and round so you can fit more stuff in there. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to connect it from the lid all the way down. So if you want to practice with your finger first, that might not be a bad idea. So I'm just kind of figuring out where it's going to go. Again, if you want to use a pencil first to kind of figure that out so that it it's nice and round. I'm just going to draw really lightly. You guys probably can't even really see that line that I just made because it's super light. 
you don't want to draw really hard because it'll be really difficult to erase it. So there's my first curve line and then I'm going to kind of plan it out with my finger again, figure out where it's going to go, super light line, and then I'm going to trace it with my Sharpie. I'm using a permanent marker, but again you guys can use your washable black marker that you guys have in your book bags. All right, we have our fishbowl. I'm going to add a couple of dashed or dotted lines to make the glass, to make it look more like glass. It's the reflection in the glass. Maybe some lines on the side, some dashed lines. You guys know the elements of art. We've talked about different types of line. There, now it looks like a shiny glass fishbowl. Now I gotta add the water. So to add the water, I'm just gonna add some U's connected together. Maybe a couple of little loop-de-loop -loop lines to make it look more animated like a cartoon. So a U. You, loop de loop, you, 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 maybe another loop de loop. And there's my water for my fishbowl. I kind of added, I made my um, line kind of like more of a smile line to make it look more round because the bowl is round. All right, so we're done with our marker. If you traced, if you did it with pencil, make sure you trace it with black marker before moving on to the next step. And if I'm going too fast, guys, you can always pause, rewind as many times as you'd like. I'm gonna do, the next part we're gonna do is the color part of our fishbowl to make it look like a bluish color. So I'm actually gonna be using some construction paper crayons. You can just use regular crayons, that's fine too. I would recommend peeling the paper off or if you have broken crayons, you don't have to do that part. So I'm going to use the side of my crayon because we're doing a crayon rubbing. Um, if you're using cardboard, you're going to notice while you're rubbing that there's a lot of texture. There's a lot of bumps because the corrugated cardboard kind of shows up a little bit. So it'll look more like this if you're using cardboard. If you're using the back of a cereal box or a snack box, it's going to look a little bit smoother as you can see, but it's still picking up some texture. So I'm starting with this purple color and I'm just going to kind of go, I'm just starting with the, the water first. I'm kind of going all over this area quickly. See how much faster that is when you use the side of the crayon. Okay, and I'm going to maybe, if you want to make it look a little bit darker, you can even use the tip of the crayon to draw with. So you can do both. And when you look at something that's round, you'll notice the edges are a little bit darker and as you get to the center, it gets lighter and lighter. So I'm going to start darker on the edges like that. And then as I get closer to the middle, I'm going to not push quite as hard. I'm going to gradually lift it up a little bit. Use less muscle. And if it's not perfect, guys, we're going to be covering this up soon with our clay anyways, with our different fish and our sea life. So if it doesn't look perfect, which is okay anyways, it never has to look perfect. It never has to look um, like your friends or like Miss Gows, it can look any way you want it to, just do your best. Um, but we're going to be covering it up soon anyways, so. All right, so I pushed hard on the edge and then I lightened it up towards the middle. You can even add other colors to it if you want to add a little bit more of this type of blue, light blue and dark blue. And I think I'm happy with the way the water looks. Now I'm going to use this aqua color for the top, for the glass part. So I'm going to use the side of my crayon. And I'm doing it kind of quickly. Again, you guys can take your time and do take a little bit more time to do this um, a little bit neater. I've also done this before, so um, I already know what to do. So you guys can just take your time and go as slow as you need to. All right. And this video is always going to be up. So if you guys ever want to do it again or like refer back to it later, it'll be there. Okay, so there's my fish bowl. Yippee. So now we can start doing the fun part, which is the salt dough. So again, if you guys do not have flour and salt at home, which most people do have those ingredients, but if, if you do not have those ingredients, it's okay. You can use Play-Doh, you can use air dry clay, model, modeling clay, whatever you have. Um, but I, the reason why I'm doing salt dough is because we, people usually have you know, flour and salt, and salt of some kind at home that they can use. And you only really need a little bit. So to make this mixture, you are going to need 
a bowl to start. So let's start with your flour. You're gonna need a half a cup of flour. So you're gonna fill it up with flour and you're gonna level it off with your finger and dump it in your bowl. So half a cup of flour, quarter cup of salt, scoop it in your bowl, and then you're gonna add a quarter cup of water and you're gonna mix it up with your hands and if it feels really sticky at first, that's okay. Just keep mixing it. If it's still really, really sticky and it's sticking to your hands, add a little bit more flour to it. If it's, if it's feeling um, really, really dry and crumbly, knead it some more. Kneading is when you like mix dough with your hands like this. Um, if it's feeling really crumbly, just keep doing that. Or you can add a tiny little bit of water. Um, to make the colors that I did, I used paint. So I took my clay or my salt dough, I divided it up into three pieces, flattened it out, added a couple drops of paint, folded it in, and just went to town mixing it with my hands. Your hands will get dirty. I had to wash mine in between um, doing this, or if you have like a wet rag, you can use that as well. Um, and do the same thing with the next one. So flatten it out, add some yellow, mix it up, flatten the next sphere out, add some red, mix it up. The red might look a little bit pink. That's okay. That's when we mix, um, we mix white and red together. That's called opaque and that's usually like this color anyways. It's usually like a pink. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our secondary colors. So we have primary colors right now. If you look at our color wheel, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue right so we have our red so i'm going to roll them in a ball red yellow and blue i'm putting them in a triangle in between each primary color is a secondary color so if you mix red and yellow together i'm going to break off a piece about the size of a grape so a piece of red and a piece of yellow and i'm going to just mix them together folding them in Just like that and look it's starting to look like orange cool there's our first secondary color orange and if you forget what color orange makes or how to make orange you just look on each side of it so orange is right here red is next to it yellow is next to it so that gives you your answer you just mix red and yellow and it makes orange okay so there's our first secondary color. So to make red and blue, we get purple. So if you mix those two colors together, so another piece of grape, about the size of a grape, about the size of a grape. When you mix red and blue, it also makes a secondary color, which is purple. I'm trying to mix it kind of fast. And if you notice that it's not quite purple, like it's not going to be a vibrant purple, like, you know, like this, um, you know, that's okay. If it's too reddish, you can always add a little bit more blue. If it looks too bluey, you can add a little bit more red. I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to keep that just the way it is. So there's my purple. So the last secondary color is green. So if you look on either side of green, yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to grab a piece of yellow about the size of a grape, piece of blue about the size of a grape. Sometimes the blue, because the blue is so dark and the yellow is so light, the blue overpowers the yellow a little bit. And sometimes it doesn't come out quite right. So maybe just add a little bit, a little bit extra yellow so your green isn't like super dark green, unless you want it super dark green. Then you can add blue, more blue to it. Okay, so there is my green. So we have our colors of the rainbow. We have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, just like our color wheel. Okay, so we're gonna start to make our little fishies in our aquarium. So I'm gonna just kinda move everything up so you can see all of my colors and what I'm mixing and all that. So 
Um, first thing I'm going to do is start with the bottom, and that is the seaweed. So seaweed doesn't have to be green. It can be any color you want to. But to do the seaweed, all you need to do is break off a small piece about the size of, I guess, a like an M&M maybe, and you roll it into a coil. A coil is a long piece of clay. If you don't know your clay vocabulary yet, that's what coil means. So you just roll it. You can use your table if that's easier. I'm just trying to show you how to do it on my hands. And then you push it. You can arrange it on the bottom like that. And then you just push it into your cardboard. Now, if it's not sticking, so I see how it's coming off and it's sticking to my hand. All you have to do is dip your finger in water like that, and it'll stick to the cardboard a little bit better. So I'm going to take off some green, roll it into a coil. Maybe I want a longer piece of seaweed this time. Add a little bit more water. Doop, doop, doop. Take this and arrange it in a kind of a squiggly line, like a snake, and push it into my cardboard. See how I'm just using, I'm just tapping it with my finger. I'm not smushing it down because you don't want it to be too flat. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to use up the rest of my green. I don't have as much green as I should have should have um, mixed up, but that's okay. I guess I won't be using green for any of my fishies. So I'm going to make some more seaweed. Another wavy line. Push it in. I have just enough for two more pieces. I'm trying to go a little bit quickly so you guys can move on all right push it in and one more so for the other parts of the bottom of the fish bowl um, sometimes you see some stones or some seashells you can kind of or maybe there's some other kind of wild little um, sea life in there maybe like a snail or a crab or something like that so I kept mine kind of simple I just added um, some rocks and a little tiny snail at the bottom so to do that, all you have to do is break off a piece of clay the size of a pea, roll it into a sphere. Sphere is another vocabulary word you need to know for clay. And you just push it into your cardboard. And again, if it's not sticking, just add a tiny little bit of water to it and it should stick to your cardboard. You want it to stick to the cardboard and not your hands. If your, car if your clay starts to, your salt dough starts to dry out a little bit, because mine's kind of been sitting here for a little. I already mixed mine before I started this video, just to save some time. Um, you can add a tiny bit of water to it, or if it's really sticky, add a little bit of flour, a little bit more flour. Okay, so there's some blue rocks, and then I, maybe I can add some red rocks. Sometimes when you buy those little rocks at the pet shop, they have lots of cool colors in them. So you can get as creative as you'd like. But I want to keep mine kind of simple and just add two colors because I want to save the rest of my salt dough for my little animals, my fish, maybe a turtle, maybe a seahorse, whatever type of animal you can think of that lives in water. Okay, so there's my little pebbles. To make a snail, all you have to do is break off a piece a large peanut M&M. Roll it into a coil. Coil is a long piece of clay. And then you just, <clears throat> excuse me, you just kind of roll it up like that. And you stick it on. Kind of looks like a seashell too. There's my little snail. Gary the snail. There. Okay, the last part is the fish. So pick whatever color you want to start with. I'm just going to make two fish, but again, you can make as many as you want. I think I'm going to start with red. It's about that size, like a cherry tomato. And I'm going to wet my cardboard just a little bit right where I'm going to put it. And that's also a good way to kind of mark where you want to, where you want to put your fish. And I'm going to push it with my fingers. There's the fish's body, fish's body. And then I'm gonna add the next color. So maybe I'll do, I don't know, I'll do purple maybe. Yeah, I'll do purple. 
So I'm gonna break off another piece for my other fish. I'm gonna kind of move them over here, give them some space, push it in. Mine's, my purple's a little dark, but that's okay. Tap it, and it is stuck. So there's my fish body. Then we can start adding things like their little lips. Tiny, the tiniest piece. I'm gonna roll it with my thumb and my pointer. And I'm going to bend it for until it's like a U shape. And I'm going to kind of press it on the front of my fish where his little mouth would be. Stick into me. There. And I'm gonna do the same for this fish. Maybe I'll do orange. I'm picking colors that are not the same so that they kind of stand out a little bit. Roll with my finger and my pointer, my thumb and my pointer, and then I'm going to bend it, stick it on. Again, if it's not sticking to the cardboard like mine, you can add a tiny little drop of water. And you can just mess, I can, I even use my pencil sometimes to kind of help me form it on the cardboard so my fingers aren't sticking to it. Kind of help flatten it out a little bit. There we go. Awesome. We're going to add the tail. I'm going to stick with the same color as the mouth for the tail. So a little piece, I'm going to roll it into a sphere and I'm going to kind of form it into, I'm going to make it a little bit flat, flat is slab, clay vocabulary. If you, if you flatten something out like what we just did here, that's called a slab. And I'm going to make kind of a, like a flat triangle shape and I'm going to stick it on for the tail. Okay, and you can, again, use your pencil or, or something else, maybe a, a straw or a crayon or something to help you kind of form it. Tap it a little bit, and I'm gonna do the tail on the purple fish. That's another piece. Roll into a sphere, flatten it out, and form it into a triangle shape. Stick it on the tail. Take as long as you need. I'm, I know I'm going a little bit fast. And I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna add some texture to my tail. I'm just gonna poke some little holes. And that's also gonna help the clay dry a little bit faster. If you do not have paint, I forgot to mention this, if you do not have paint or food coloring, you can just do this with just plain salt dough and wait for it to dry. You can even use markers when you're done to color it in with just your regular water-based markers like this, washable markers. You can just color right on top if you want to. Okay, so if, again, if you don't have food coloring or paint at home, you can just color it when it is dry. Do not do this when it's wet because it may not turn out the way you want it to. The marker might just sink in and you might also ruin your markers that way. All right, so now we're gonna do the little eyes. Tiny, the tiniest little piece you can possibly break off. Roll it into a sphere. Stick it right there. Poke the little hole with your pencil. Here's my first eye. I'm gonna add a blue eye to this one. Little piece, roll it to a sphere the size of a little tiny pea. And poke a hole with your pencil. You can add things like fins if you want. Um, uh, the top fin. So I'm gonna just add a coil coils a long skinny piece of clay, just a really small one, and I'm gonna stick it on top like this. Flatten it out with your finger. And I'm going to use my pencil to add some little holes to make it look more like a fin. Um, give it some texture as well. Texture is how something feels. You can add a little fin right here if you want to, right on top. Add some little dots with your pencil. I wouldn't go stabbing it like this because you don't want to go too far in, but just to add a little bit of texture. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this fish. I'm gonna add a little fin to the top coil, press it in, use my pencil to add some texture, and then add the other little fin. All right, so that is how you make the fish. So the last part I'm gonna show you is the bubbles. So for that, you just break off a tiny piece, roll it into a sphere, and I just did, you know, just a few above the fish. Oh, this is too close. Because there's usually bubbles 
um, in the water when the fish are, you know, eating something or br just breathing. You see little bubbles above them. Oh, this is sticking to my cardboard. I'm just going to add some water and stick it on there. That works much better. If you add some water directly to your cardboard, I just use the tip of my finger. Oh, no, it's sticking to my fingers. Yeah. And press it on there. So there is my finished aquarium with my little fish and my snail. You can get as creative as you'd like. So if you see this finished one that I did before, um, I also added a little sea turtle, or I'm sorry, a, a seahorse. And to do that, it's basically the same as making the snail shell that I just showed you a few minutes ago. So get as creative as you'd like, add as many animals as you'd like, and make sure you please take a picture of your work when you are finished and send it to me through Class Dojo. I can't wait to see. Have fun!